So it's good to be here today. And such wonderful to wake up and, and find out about Charlotte. That was to answer prayers and just showing the power of God was amazing. Us. It's wonderful to gather here with everyone each Lord's Day and to worship our God in spirit and truth. You all know that I'm not a preacher by any profession. Or, and so I appreciate the encouragement and the prayers from everyone here in the Lord's Church in Ephrata. You know, just a little over 18 months ago, the most I would have been comfortable doing was reading the scripture passage. A few months later, on Mother's Day, I, I did a Lord's Supper comment. And, and later, I started leading the singing. Eventually, I taught a class for everyone on overcoming anxiety through God's peace. And two weeks ago, I taught a class for the men titled The Danger of Someday. But today, in a moment, I'm going to talk about hope. But first, I'd like to go back in time a little bit to last week when I was leading us in song. And we all sang that wonderful song in the binder number 171 in Christ Alone. Isn't that such a powerful song? As we were all singing with such feeling and emotion, I was trying desperately to hold back tears. The words are so powerful and so meaningful to me. And I think it's no coincidence that the first line of that song is in Christ my alone, in Christ alone, my hope is found. Listen to the words of that song again as I read it as a poem. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ, I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God and helpless babe, the gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied, for every sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ, I live. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he arose again. As he stands in victory, sin's curse has lost its grip on me. For I am his and he is mine bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand until he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. Isn't that an, just an amazing song? Mm -hmm. So many aspects of our faith contained in those four short poetic verses. So I said I was going to talk about hope. And it's something that Joe Manganiello suggested I needed to focus on. It was also the first theme. I'm sorry. It was also the theme of the first words of encouragement or invitation that I presented on a Wednesday night way back in 2003. About two months after I had been baptized and I had all that fire that everybody has when, when they first become a member of the church. I found a a small business card sized tract like this. And I, I gave you all a copy of it. 
we get a little bit bigger. And it reads, God knows your purpose. Do you? And then there's a scripture verse on it. And it says, for I know the plans that you, that I have for you, declares the Lord, dot, dot, dot. Plans to give you hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. Well, you know, I never noticed the dot, dot, dot back then. But there's a lot of meaning in that dot, dot, dot. This moment. Listen to this in the New English Translation. Jeremiah 29, 11 reads, For I know that I, what I have planned for you, says the Lord, I have plans to prosper you, not to harm you. I have plans to give you a future filled with hope. God speaks throughout the Bible of his plan for us. In Proverbs, the 23rd chapter and verse 18, for surely there is a future and your hope will not be cut off. Later in Proverbs, the 24th chapter, verse 14, likewise know that the wisdom is sweet to your soul. If you have found it, you have a future and your hope will not be cut off. Similarly, in Psalm 8, 9, 18, the writer says, For the needy are not permanently ignored, and the hopes of the oppressed are not forever dashed. Later in the book of Psalms, in chapter 39, verse 7, But now, O Lord, upon what am I relying? For you are my only hope. In chapter 62 of Psalms and verse 5 it says, Patiently wait for God alone, my soul, for he is the one who gives me hope. In chapter 71, verse 5, For you are my hope, O sovereign Lord. I have trusted in you since I was young. In Psalm 11, I'm sorry, Psalm 119. Verse 81, I desperately long for your deliverance. I find hope in your word. And moving down in that same psalm to one verse 147, I am up before dawn crying for help. I find hope in your word. And finally, in, in Psalms 146, verse 5, how blessed is the one whose helper is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord. The Psalms are filled with hope. We just need to read them. Matthew 21 verse, I'm sorry, Matthew 12 verse 21. And his name, the Gentiles will hope. In his name, the Gentiles will hope. The Gospels and Acts are filled with hope. Turn over to Acts chapter 2. Verse 26, Peter says, Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My body also will live in hope. And in chapter 24 of Acts, in verse 15, Luke tells us that Paul says, I have a hope in God. A hope that these men themselves accept too. That there's going to be a resurrection of both the righteous and the unrighteous. In the book of Romans. In chapter 4 and verse 18. Against hope. Abraham believed in hope. With all with the result that he became the father of many nations, according to the pronouncement, so will your descendants be. Five, Romans five, verses two through five. 
through whom we have also obtained access into the grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in the hope of God's glory. Not only this, but we also rejoice in sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance character and character hope. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has given to us. Then in Romans, the eighth chapter, verses 21, 20, 21, and 24. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of God who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will also be set free from the bondage of decay into the glorious freedom of God's children. Stepping and then skipping down to verse 24. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. Because who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, if we eagerly wait for it, we will eagerly wait for it with endurance. Romans 12, verse 12. Rejoice in hope. Endure in suffering and persist in prayer. And finally in Romans 15, verse 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you believe in him, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The book of Romans is filled with hope. All we have to do is read it. 1 Corinthians in 13, this is where Paul talks about love. And in verse 7, he says, it, love, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. In verse 13, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Galatians 5 and 5. For through the Spirit, by faith, we wait expectantly for the hope of righteousness. Ephesians 1, verses 11 through 13. In case, in Christ, we too have been claimed as God's own possession, since we were predestined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to the counsel of his will. So that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, would be to the praise of his glory. And when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, when you believed in Christ, you were marked with the seal of the Holy Spirit. This Holy Spirit brings us hope. Ephesians 4, verse 4. There's one body and one spirit. Just as you too were called to the one hope of your calling. In Philippians 1 and verse 20. My confident hope is that I will in no way be ashamed, but that with the complete boldness, even now as, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether I live or die. The letters to the Ephesians, the Galatians, Philippians, and Corinthians are filled with hope. Turn over to the book of Colossians. Colossians is filled with hope. Chapter 1, verse 5. Your faith and love have arisen from the hope laid up for you in heaven, which you have heard about in the message of truth, the gospel. Down in verses 22 and 23 of chapter 1. But now he has reconciled you by his physical body through the death to present you holy without blemish and blameless before him. If indeed you remain in the faith established and firm without shifting from the hope of the gospel you heard. This gospel has also been preached in all creation under heaven. And I, Paul, have become its servant. 
and then in verse 26 through 28, that is the mystery that has been kept hidden from ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. God wanted to make known to them the glorious riches of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. We proclaim him by instructing and teaching all people with wisdom so that we may present every person mature in Christ. The letter of Colossians is filled with hope. Turning to First Thessalonians. In chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, we thank God always for all of you as we mention you constantly in our prayers. Because we recall the presence of our God and Father, your work of faith and labor and love and endurance of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. We know, brothers and sisters, loved by God, that he has chosen you. And then in First Thessalonians, in the fifth chapter, verses 8 and 9. But since we are of the day, we must stay sober by putting on the breastplate of faith and love and as helmet of hope for our salvation. For God did not destine us for wrath, but for gain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. In Titus, the first chapter, verse 2. Paul says, in hope of eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised before time began. And then in Titus, also in chapter 2, verses 11 through 13. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all the people. And it trains us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age as we await the happy fulfillment of our hope in the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So Hebrews 6 and 18 and 20. So that we who have found refuge in him may find strength may find strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us through two unchangeable things, since it is impossible for God to lie. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, sure and steadfast, which reaches inside, behind the curtain, where Jesus, our forerunner, entered on our behalf, since he became a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews 10, 23, and let us hold unwaveringly to the hope that we confess for the one who made the promise is trustworthy. And Hebrews 11, verse 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews has a lot of hope in it, don't you think? Let's check what Peter has. In 1 Peter 1, verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he gave us a new birth into living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Therefore, in, in verse 13, therefore, get your minds ready for action by being fully sober and set your hope completely on the grace that will be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. And then in verse 21, Peter says, through him, you know that, you know, I'm sorry, through him, you now trust in God. Who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. And Peter says in chapter 3 of 1 Peter and verse 15. 
but the crop, but set Christ apart as Lord in your hearts. And always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks about the hope you possess. And everyone who has this hope, focus on him, purifies himself, just as Jesus is pure. John, 1 John 3.3, 3. the entire Bible is a collection of teachings that offers us hope. There's so much hope in God's word. We ought to be reading the Bible daily. And like the Bereans searching it daily. Oh, by the way, isn't Bible Gateway a wonderful resource? Can you imagine if the Bereans, indeed all the early churches, had possessed the entire Bible at their fingertips? The way we do today, either, well, back then it would have been in print. How many more souls might have been saved? How many wars might have been averted? How many, how many more might have been converted from Judaism, or polytheism, other pagan beliefs, and later Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism? Imagine how much more peace we might have today if only people knew how much hope was contained in the Word of God. And that, my friends is our mission today and always to become well-versed in his word, to bring his word of hope to our community and places beyond. Well, how do we do this? We must study and we must pray for wisdom and understanding, and we must teach. Tim Long told us a few weeks ago, we must all be teachers. That includes me and you, Maddie, and you, Laura, and you, Joshua, and you, Maya, and you, Eli, and you, Phil, and everyone in here, we all need to teach in whatever way we can. And how do we teach? Well, first you need to live the, the way that his word teaches us to live. People won't wish to know what we believe or where we find our joy and our love and our hope if they don't see it in the way that we interact with each other, with others. Not just here on Sundays or online on Wednesday evenings, but wherever we are out in the community talking to people. We can organize prayer meetings and Bible reading meetups or even friendly social gatherings like the ones we've been having up at Highland Manor thanks to Al McClellan. So wait, does that, what does that mean, you may ask? It means putting our faith and our beliefs into action. It means not being not just hearers of the word, but doers also. James, the brother of Jesus, tells us in, in James 1 and chapter, I'm sorry, chapter 1, verses 21 through 25. So put away all filth and evil excess and humbly welcome the message implanted within you, which is able to save your souls. Be sure you live out of the message and do not merely listen to it and so deceive yourselves. For if someone merely listens to the message and does not live it out, he is like someone who gazes at his own face in a mirror. For he gazes at himself and then goes out and immediately forgets what sort of person he was. But the one who peers into the perfect law of liberty fixes his attention there and does not become a forgetful listener. But one who lives it out, he will be blessed in what he does. As we prepare for our weekend with Wilson coming up in three weeks, starting November 1st, let us all find new ways to show our love for each other, for God, and to all those that we encounter who are still seeking for hope and love and truth and peace of mind and God's comfort. All those things which our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, freely gives to us. His life, his teachings, his miracle, 
his death and resurrection, and through his Holy Spirit that he gave each one of us, and his promise of eternal life for those who believe and obey his gospel. If there's anyone here in pain today or hurting, or has a special need for God's mercy and love and grace, or simply needs the prayers of the congregation, we're here for you. And we hope that you will come forward as we stand and sing the song that Al has chosen for us, number 63. I need thee every hour. 